Okay, well today uh, I have my brother Aldrich with me here, and we just went down to uh, Los Angeles for the Camp Flognaw Festival. That's Tyler the Creator's music festival. Had a pretty amazing lineup. I'm actually going to throw the lineup on screen here. That way we don't have to go through the whole thing um, real quick, and you guys can either pause it or just take a quick glance at it, and we'll talk about who we saw. I'm also going to try and lace some of the footage I took throughout the, the time we were there into this kind of little video. Um, Very obnoxious, uh, annoying public vlog. Vlogging, annoying vlogging, and pu vlogging, annoyingly publicly vlogging. Aldrich is. We're gonna kind of just talk about our experience. Annoyingly publicly vlogging. Aldrich. How we felt about everything, what we did, and just kind of give you a, a, a verbal recap. Excuse me. So, kind of a. Uh, just hang on and we'll kind of go through everything from our trip, our time at the airport, uh, all the way back to when we got home. So, <clears throat> basically, to start our trip off and. This is always great. We ended up uh, having a delayed flight. We were delayed how long in Spokane? Had it been a good two and a half hours, three hours. This is the first time we're vlogging. Uh, Aldrich is out here. I don't know if I can switch it, but Aldrich's out here. We just got that rare, I'll oh, show you a rare spot. We got the rare spot fire Taco Bell chips. We got the rare spot Mellow, Mellow Yellow. Yellow. It's the only Mellow Yellow in the airport, according to my man over here. Just because right. of fog. We were originally supposed to arrive in Los Angeles at 6 p.m. and instead we arrived at 11.50. Well, uh, we got about to... 20 minutes in the airport. We uh, have gotten a little bit of food and drink in us and uh, we're already bored desk walking in around. And it's... our man Dylan, he was like, oh man, I don't know if you're going to make it. I, uh, you know, basically he, he didn't exactly That's say that, go. but he had to call I people to get our flights figured out and we ended up sure. adding a connection. We didn't know we were going to Utah when we left Friday, but we yeah. ended up in Utah. And from in Utah, we waited a while, and then from Utah, we ended up waiting, uh, or, you know, and going to, or, excuse me, so Spokane to Seattle. And we finally made it to Seattle, right? so here's some, for some more sitting in the airport. We waited in the Seattle, then we waited in Utah, then we ended up in L.A. <coughs> yeah, um, we got to the hotel at, like, 1230, almost 1 a.m., but my man here, hold on, before we get too far about it, we did spend our time at the airport, all right? Man here had a nice uh, bourbon here at, like, some, like, bullet, nine double and, shot, 9 a.m., 10 in the morning. Uh, we actually played some Lotto Scratchers, and I thought we won, like, 5 bucks, and I got my money back, but we, like, won, like, 12 or 13 bucks, so that was pretty cool. Um, other, I mean, we, we made the best of our time in the airport, and I'll throw those clips in now, but it was a, it was a lot of sitting around, and it wasn't exactly... Uh, the best time though the Utah airport is freaking huge um, and the Seattle airport is kind of set up weird Spokane airport tiny super tiny only two terminals um, we got to the Los Angeles airport got the bag no problem um, they have a crazy uber situation there now uber's so big they had to create a whole nother lot for uh, annoying public vlogging episode number six or something we're in and we're in LA and we're on the bus waiting to get to the uber lift parking lot it, but excuse me uber situation was easy and we got to the hotel we said the usc hotel that's on the uh university of southern campus florida or not florida florida, florida. <laughs> southern california uh university campus and it was a really cool hotel we had a really good time and we didn't do any we, we at the hotel though we made it we in LA at the hotel though. Didn't use a whole lot of the amenities, but I mean, I would stay there again. Yeah, no, it was pretty nice. I kind of wish we stayed there at 2016. It was really close to Expedition Park. Well, yeah, or Exposition Park, which Exposition, is where yeah. yeah, we went to the 2016 Flogna as well. And we, if we would have stayed there, it would have been like a block away, which is kind of wild. But um, this time it was at Dodger Stadium, which we had never been to, which was really cool. So um, yeah, really nice venue. I liked the way it was set up this year. All right, so getting into it, we woke up morning of. Um, we decided we were gonna uh, lime scooter kind of part way to the venue, and that was super fun. We out here, we on the lime, yeah, in LA. Fun just being able to lime scooter in California. We have lime scooters in our hometown yeah. here in Washington, but I mean, lime yeah. was just cool with the palm trees and. Yeah, 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 we weren't really sure what time uh, it was going to take to us to get out to Dodger Stadium, and especially with the venue going on and just L.A. traffic is usually pretty wild, and we're from Washington, you know, so that was definitely not what uh, we were sure about, so we woke up pretty early and we're like, oh, it only says it's going to take 15 minutes for us to get to there from here, so yeah. what are we going to do with the two hours we woke up before we even needed to line up out there? So, so yeah, the yeah. lime scooter was yeah, going yeah, out. And do. before we got our lime scooters together, you yeah, know, we yeah, got yeah. our drip together. We got our outfits that we, you know, put on for Flognaw, so you'll see maybe a picture of that or something like that. 
Um, but uh, we actually stopped at Popeyes. This man was hungry. I don't really eat in the morning. It's really hard for me with my appetite. I know I should, but I wasn't really hungry. And I got to say, I don't know how his experience was with the food. I haven't ever eaten at Popeyes, so I can't judge their food. But I just could not stand the smell. I don't know if it was my appetite or if it was the greasiness, but I don't ever even want to go into Popeyes again. It smelled so bad, if you ask me. So I don't really know if that's, like, normal, if it was just my appetite. But I it made me sick just being in there, and that's it. And I like fried chicken. I usually get the chicken thing at restaurants. So I was how was your food? I mean, I've had Popeyes before. It was just Popeyes. It was I mean, just Popeyes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it smelled just like a KFC would and all that. Just, I don't know. I just, just grease and It took me fry. wrong when I was in there. I had to leave. You know, I had to wait outside. I don't know yeah, what, you actually did wait outside. I, I don't know like, what the deal was, but... It was also hot in there, too. Like, down in the middle of L.A., it was already 90 degrees at that time. Which, and we'll talk about the heat yeah. later, too, because as you can see, we're, like, sunburnt, so... Super burnt. We'll, uh, we'll chat about that. Um, so anyways, we got our Uber from the Popeyes and we, uh, we were there early. We decided we wanted to be at Flogna all day. We paid for the money and you know, all we, we were been talking like, how do people go to festivals and show up for the headliner only or something like that? I show up late. And so we wanted to get our full experience. We got there at 10 when you're allowed to start lining up. And I would say we made, we made off doing well. Um, Aldrich here, what'd you do in line? You, uh, I just played Smash Bros. You, you played the whole Smash time with a couple guys them. that had brought their Switch. We'd thought about bringing our Switch, but we're like, no, the flights are actually really short to get down to LA. So we well, we thought that we thought the flights were going to be yeah. short, and then we sat <laughs> in the airport go. for you know, go. twelve hours. Or we did a yeah, twelve-hour sure. travel day. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, no, he he whooped some whooped some butt in Smash Bros. In line, he went hard. Felt kind of bad. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then we went inside, and honestly. We, I mean, the Flogna experience is amazing as is. I mean, everything's decorated. Everything, Tyler prints are everywhere. I mean, my fa I think my favorite print was, I, I love the flame print, so I like seeing the big wall of that. Or yeah. the bees. The bees, the bees were I, pretty cool. Um, um, he, he also had the Igor print, too. Yeah, just the Igor thing. Yeah. And then he had a big Igor stage. I'll throw the clip of that here as well, which it was like the, the silver from the earthquake video. And then he had the Igor statues that you could take pictures with. Yeah, three of them. Um, he had the floors. Um, there was... Two, there was Golf World or Golf Land. I, I don't know exactly what he called it, but and then there was, and that's where all the golf uh, uh, merch tents were. And we'll talk about when we kind of got some golf stuff, you know, in a little bit later because that was day two. Um, but the first day we just got in, we checked out a lot of the games right away. So we got the unlimited game pass. With the unlimited game pass, you can play and play and play. I think we should just talk about the games right now, even for both days, just kind of get that out of the way. Yeah, because I mean, we played most of the games on the first day compared to the second day because we weren't sure if there was going to be a couple few things that they wanted to sprinkle out on the second day or if what you saw on the first day was going to be on the second day and for the most part it really was the same between both days and they actually it seemed like they'd gotten rid of a lot of their big prizes accidentally on the first day compared to the second day and yeah. so they actually had to change the rules of the game all, or all of the games when you went in the second day. Um, so the, with, if you don't know, with Tyler Creator's Flognaw Festival, he puts on a real carnival. So there's carnival rides. That's a really cool aesthetic because you get to see the lights with the music at night. Um, and then there's the games. And the games are your typical carnival game. But the prizes are like merch that is themed after the Flognaw Carnival. Um, there was a variety, a huge variety of items. Um, you know, from fanny packs to frisbees to different hats to lanyards to water bottles to clocks to this pillows. this this snake to oh I should have got brought the pillows. Um, I will put a little picture of everything that I got at least. Aldrich and I both made out like bandits. You know, oh, yeah. arm loads of stuff. Honestly, if you um. I feel like I'm probably out of focus, but that's okay. If you uh, go to this festival, you can make out like quite the bandit and basically come back with more merch um, than you plan to. Um, so what I was saying, though, was you can walk away with so much stuff that it's worth that limited wristband pass. I think we paid something like $100 for the, the wristband alone. Yeah, it was um, like $150 or something. The concert tickets were, I think, like 200 each just to get into the festival, and that's for two days. But the wristband, if you take the time to play the games and you're a big fan of Tyler the Creator and the kind of things he makes in the merch, it's well worth the cost. If you're not very good at these games, however, and you're <laughs> or something to that effect, we also got this cool flame slider. I want to show that off. Um, if, you, if you're not very good at the games, for example, or you don't think you want to spend that time because you want to see every artist there, it's not worth your time necessarily. But for us, there were a lot of artists on the lineup that we didn't need to see or necessarily want to see, so it gave us that time to get that experience. And it's really up to you to decide if that experience is worth it. They do sell tickets for the games. You don't have to buy the wristband, but the tickets are a dollar a piece, and some of the games cost a lot of tickets, and if you lose, you're kind of out your money, just like anything. So make what you will of that, but again, like if you're not a future fan, I'll, again, I'll take a picture of everything we got. It's a pretty amazing how much you can walk away with, so we kind of want to you know, shout out Tyler for that. Um, 
otherwise, uh, so we, we got in, we played a lot of games on the first day, and, you know, there's tons of food to check out, there's, uh, <clears throat> what else did we do on the first day right away, do you remember exactly, besides the games, or we just hit games hard? I mean, the golf tent was pretty crazy on the first day, yeah, so the we tried, like, heavy going for the golf up to tent. the area, because um, at first, because I believe it was the gnaw stage, is the first one that when you walk in, yeah, it was the gnaw you stage. saw gnaw, and there wasn't really anything going on out there, because I mean, they opened up the doors at 12 o'clock, yeah, so we waited and a while. so at one thirty, one forty was really when most of the stages started doing stuff, so for the first hour and all, that really is just And we made sure to check out the whole festival everything. right away, and kind of do a lap, and you know, I think we did end up getting some food a little earlier on. Um, I am a bad person and didn't eat a whole lot, but we did eat some good things. We definitely got these cool Martian cups and, and filled them full of, like, slushy and icy early, so that was pretty um, awesome. Those were pretty good. Um, let's see, on the first day, the first performer we wanted to see was Slow Ty. He's a really dope rapper, so we got to check him out, and he had an amazing set. Um, oh, he did a great job. I was really hoping that he'd play Psycho, because I wasn't sure between, like, his verses and like what he does in that song and with Denzel and all that, I wasn't sure where that kind of went through between the two. So I was really glad that he did get to play Psycho during his set because he did a great job. Yeah, no, he, it was one of the best performances we saw, and it was the first performance we saw of the day. So yeah. it was pretty pretty awesome. Um, from there, uh, we let's see, what did we check out? I, now I'm having a hard time remembering exactly what what the order was. Oh, you gonna pull up the lineup? Yeah, I can pull up the lineup Perfect. from here because so the app was great for that. Um, he'll pull up the lineup, but the first the first day we did take a lot of time to go look at each game and play each game, so that did take a lot of our uh, initial time because uh, there's also other cool art booths and like other vendors were there that we did hit more up on the second day, um, and I kind of want to do everything in order. So Yeah, yeah, Thundercat was the uh, second one that we ended up seeing, and he was actually at the uh, same stage that Slow Tie was at, but he played at 4.55, so we actually had in between a good there, hour we were and 55 playing, minutes I think that's kill. when we got food and games as well. Um, and just yeah, honestly, there was just so pizza. much to see and so many people there that there's a lot of time spent just kind of checking out the things that Tyler put together. Um, you know, like there was, for example, by the Igor stage, he had every Golf LaFleur shoe he's released out to kind of check out. And so yeah. we kind of checked, you know, we walked by those things and um, really just got a kind of feel for the festival. Um, after Thundercat, I think we made our way to Juice World. Yeah. And Juice World put on an amazing everything. show. Aldrich's a bigger fan of Juice than I, but I got to say he really put on quite quite the performance, really. Oh, yeah, he did a great one. There was, a, like, out of all the songs that I was hoping for him to play, he definitely played them. I was pretty happy with that. I wasn't sure if he was going to play Hate Me because he played his remix of, like, Lil Tecca when... Ransom, yeah. Yeah, with Ransom and everything, and that that was awesome. And I was like, wait, so is he going to do Hate Me? But he didn't play any Hate Me, but he did. He definitely played a lot of good ones, so he put on a great yeah, show. Yeah, and I, I didn't expect... I mean, I, I, now I'm a fan of Juice World. I was a hater in the beginning, but just based on his performance alone, it really just, like, put him up here another notch for me anyways. Um... And then after Juice World, I think it was time for Tyler, right? Yeah, it went straight into Tyler. And Tyler, after Juice I mean, he made it to where he was the only one playing, and we were actually up by probably the first big sound in Lightbox, which is about midway through the festival, or through the, the you know the where the stage was. But by the time Tyler was playing, and we'd been there for so long, and so you know so squishing, and you know rocked out to a set, I said, hey, let's try and go back, and we didn't realize how. So many people. We it took us so long to fight to the back of the crowd. It was kind of an amazing experience to see that many people just in, for one performer. Well, and like out of all the other shows that were there, um, just like with the mystery guest, um, Tyler made it kind of where I, I imagine he expected everyone going to Flognaw really wanted to see Tyler and didn't want to have to be like, oh well, they're pinning up Tyler against this artist that I really want to see. And he actually made it to where no other set was going on during his set so everyone in the festival that wanted to see tyler was able to see tyler without having to be heartbroken of like who else did they want to see at the same time so from there yep. it really started getting full with what was like yeah like you're saying with most of the other acts where we're about we're halfway through the crowd it almost became like the front 10 percent with right. just all those people lined up like it was a huge huge group of people compared to the previous sets pretty crazy um, and then after Tyler, it was time to watch 21 Savage, I believe. Yeah, and so that was basically a mass migration because it was right over the 21. I think someone else might have played in there, but it was definitely a mass migration to 21. Um, we watched most of his set. I think we kind of left right at the end because we were afraid of the Uber pricing in L.A., trying yeah. to get back to the hotel because there's been surge pricing in the past, and we didn't want to leave with the huge wave of people. We weren't really interested in um, the last artist of the night, which, I'm, you know, I'm sorry if you're a Solange fan. Mm -hmm. We just weren't we're not the type. Yeah. We're there for the rappers and things like that mostly so uh realistically you know um we kind of missed out on that 
Um, but we, we got home back to the hotel. We got a little, I think we ordered Panda that night. It was really, we did. really easy. Like it was just a, a nice, you know, ride back to the uh, hotel. Like I thought the traffic was going to be a lot worse. No problem. Um, I was out. Yeah. All dry. Oh, oh, this is, this is the part about the heat. So the first day that day at 1 PM, it was a uh, 90 degrees. Um, lean in just a little bit over this way. Yeah. It was a uh, 90 degrees on the first day at 1 PM and we drank water all day. Aldrich was really good about with his hydro pack and I had a water bottle that I kept trying to fill up. Um, I typically like cold water and so it's kind of warm. So I didn't drink as much as I should yeah, have. The refill stations um, had some pretty warm water. I'm not going to lie. I have a poor appetite a lot of the time and, uh, I didn't eat a whole lot. So by the time I had gotten in the last Uber, I actually just started sweating profusely. Uh, the Uber driver was very talkative. I usually sit front seat because I can handle that. I can talk to, you know, talk to people a lot and some other people aren't as into that. So I just get in the front seat and usually I'm with the conversation, but I could barely reply by the time I got to the hotel. I mean, you can explain. I was, I was breathing heavy. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I was looking over. I was like, okay, so you're not, you're more than tired right now. Like, yeah. I, I've seen this. This is definitely, you got some heat exhaustion. I was worried about and how we, it might have we affected also you on forgot, the day, We like, forgot sunscreen uh, the first yeah. day. Why we we both forgot sunscreen the, the first day. day. Um, and that so, yeah, bad. Uh, I, and at the hotel, I started drinking more water and it started getting a little better, but I went to bed with a massive headache and I almost thought I was going to be sick the next day. But luckily, thankfully, the very next morning, uh, I woke up and it was just fine. There was no problem. So yeah, cause we filled up your Martian cup with ice and water, like three and different I made sure times to drink it. And, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a definitely a worrisome kind of experience just cause of how hot it was. But you know, being up here in Washington, it's, you know, 40 degrees right there today. And whereas in 90 degree different or 50 degree difference, when it's yeah. 90 degrees out. Um, all right. So, um, we're back here with, uh, with our kind of flog, recap and explanation. Um, day two, we got in and we got a little more wise to some of the things like day one, we didn't actually, uh, utilize our 21 wristband. We didn't go in the beer garden at all. Um, we weren't really looking to drink that much, but we realized that it was a really great place to watch some of the performances from if we didn't want to be too involved with the heaviness of the crowd. So that was a really smart move. Oh, yeah. I if mean, you're over we 21, 21 when we went to 2016. Yeah, 2016. And so yeah. being there now, we're like, oh, yeah, the beer garden's so an like, option. Because like for us, um, I know a lot of people really want to be involved in that front row and in that action, but sometimes it's nicer just to be able to see and hear everything without dying. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the beer garden was a really great place to be able to get a spot real quick for some of the shows and actually get some like just to be able to enjoy it um yeah we hit up the pop tart house the oh yeah this so very the, early so when we early on it's oh, so very well honestly the first thing all we did was check out the golf store right away yeah. um what did you cop in that first interaction so the first time i went to the golf store i bought four of the you got golf us the, stickers. yeah you got the flame stickers those are really tight i don't have any with me right here and but then i got those are super cool and his backpack he got the one of the cool golf backpacks yeah it was the green one with the purple thumbprints um, so, and while he was doing that, I actually had met someone the, the other day in line and, or the, you know, the day before in line and me and him, he told me there was a booth by Verdi and it's the girls don't cry kind of stuff. That was a flog, not collab. Unfortunately, they sold out the second day. I would have got something, but I got a cool picture with that. So that's, that's really rad. Um, and then at that point, me and the, the guy I met when we had went to the pop tart booth and at the pop tart booth, you could get points. Um, and you can spend it and we're doing different activities and you can spend the points on just free merch. So like one of the things I did was like, I learned how to DJ. It really wasn't learning how to DJ, but it was like fake scratching, but it was kind of a fun thing. Um, what was another thing in there? Well, so they had that, the easiest way to get points was eating a quarter just of a pop trying tart. Pop-tarts, and yeah. so they had like three different stands that had different pop tart flavors. One of them had toasted pop tarts. One of them had just room temperature pop tarts. Pro- and then the last one had yeah. frozen pop tarts. So they had like pink milkshake and everything. And, um, yeah, so the, for every quarter that you asked for, and it was free. Yeah, so everything just was be free. like, I had like a pink milkshake Pop Tart, and they're like, okay, here you go, and then let me they see your punch, your card, punch and card. They stamped it, and then they had a uh, um, break dancing booth. Yeah, there was like break separate dancing. prizes, or you could get points to get the regular prizes. Yeah, and then uh, once you took your, once you got your point card full, you could just go to the end and you could buy shirts with it. They were like, oh, how many points do you have? Ten. Great. This is five points. This is three points. And it was just free. It was really cool with pop tarts. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was lucky we did that early because that line was long all day, um, mm-hmm. at least until they were out of stuff. So we're lucky we got in and just went to that. Um, right next to that, YG had a merch booth for his Bompton merch. I don't know exactly if that's what it was called, what the, the clothing brand is, but everything said Bompton on it. It was a really cool because it was done up like a, a house right out of like the LA like uh, Compton area um, with the cool uh, old uh, low rider with the airbrushing on it and I had, had a little bars up on the windows yeah and bars on the windows like, and just all that I had a, I got a cool, cool I got a cool clip of it that I'll throw in right here because it was a really neat neat thing to see 
Um, I think beyond that, that's where the again, that's where the two golf stores were. That's where one of the games was. Um, mm-hmm. There was of course carnival rides right there. Um, and that's the very first thing we did after that. I think we went to check out the other games just to see. Because um, in the past when we've been there, they had refreshed the prizes. It had been a whole new set of prizes. And it really wasn't this time. So we were really happy with what we got. We played a few games. We got a few more things. But we didn't try that hard in the games on the second day. Plus, the lines were crazy on the second day. Yeah, well, because the big thing that I really liked was uh, they had a blanket at the golf store going for $80. Mm-hmm. But it was also the top prize that you can get. And you're like, oh, well, with an unlimited games pass, we're gonna get why that, aren't yeah. we getting a blanket? And so... The uh, there's a couple games that are easier than others, but also costed more than the other games. Where somewhere like one ticket, the particular one that we like to play it cost five tickets, so yeah. it was like five dollars to get it. So we just and we just used line, unlimited wristband, yeah, to go through. But yeah, no, we wanted to check what the other uh, games had, and we checked out the planko board, and you had the hammer down uh, game and all of that that was over by the flog stage and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but they all had the same prizes, but they just changed it. Because on the first day, they had it to where, oh, you popped one thing, or oh, yeah, you got the bottom prize, of the thing, yeah. you got a little prize. That counts as one point. And they had like a trading system where you added up your points to get something worth eight, or um, like the eight was the most points, yeah, and that was that's... to get the blankets. But then the second day, they made it to where you had to get that those many points during it because you couldn't trade up on the yeah. second day. But yeah, and, and regardless, like I said, we didn't do a lot of the games on the second day. We had more performers, even though our performers did start later, we had more yeah. performers to see. Um, so that's where we did get to see some of the the other, you know, just random little things that they had going on. Um, one of the cool things was uh, a tequila brand that I kind of like was there. They were Espelon. They had another system where you could uh, play a pachinko type game, win uh, cash, and then try and shop in their booth for, again, free merch. And this was in the 21 and up over area, so that was kind of cool. That was kind of exclusive. Um, the, th- the thing about that too was at the end there was a guy and he's like do you want to gamble we didn't have gamble we ended up bartering yeah. so Aldrich was really cool he took uh, some of the prizes he wasn't super interested in from the games that he had just gotten or one he actually brought back to trade but they wouldn't trade and a couple things that I had so we took the cash we won from the, their little pachinko game all that stuff and we ended up bartering with the guys to get a really cool uh, Espelon sweatshirt and then two of these beanies um, and they're just like really cool branded really quality items so um, that was a really good experience overall I think oh yeah no the people that were in that booth were having a great time it was just a yeah. party like they weren't actually serving any um, of their alcohol or anything like that they were in the beer garden so yeah you, you could had, buy it you could buy the other ones from other no, these guys were just hanging out they, and they were just, just really fun games. people and we actually like, got to bargain with them and I, I kind of like made an insult to try and barter and then they like didn't mess with that item anymore and like it was a really like yeah. kind of a tough ex- you know tough experience to an extent but um, and actually, before we even got to the Espelon, we had visited the golf store the the second time, at least. Yeah. So Aldrich went to one golf store, and or, or, and I don't know if you did It was up see. by... E- so I went to the first golf store by yeah. Igor Stage, and I was like, oh, these are these are other cool items that I'm seeing. on Because the mobile app for Camp Vlogna had some could, of its items on there. Stuff and you could Postmates and Yeah, Postmates and have them get it for you and stuff. And I was like, oh, these are some cool items. I was kind of wanting to look at these, and they're like, oh, well... This stage by the, you know, the Igor stage camp stores, they don't have those items. You want to go down um, to the next area that has no stages and is by the Bompton and the Pop-Tart booth. They yeah. actually will have more of the stuff you're looking for, plus other artist merch. And so I was like, that's so, where yeah, we, we went to So, yeah, we went to the regular merch. And and this is where we actually picked up these hats. So, these are yeah, Camp the Flogna. Hats. Yes, Camp Flogna Ranger hats. They're super sick. Um, originally, when I saw it, I wasn't sure. I thought it was cool. And then Aldrich was thinking about it. And then we had to, we, we just went for it. We're we both went for it. We had to like fucking you know just get two hats, match, go super sick, and it really worked out. People loved it, um, and they were actually you know one of the cooler merch items besides just like a t-shirt that I think we could have got. So, yeah. Well, in the moment we put them on, we're like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. these are that nice. sunlight is no oh, longer yeah. burning. And the us. sun wasn't yeah. yeah messing with us. It was cooler on the second day, but the sun wasn't messing with us as much. Oh, it was twenty degrees cooler. Um, that was the first thing we noticed. We we're like, oh. It's only 70 degrees right now. It was 90 degrees at this time yeah. yesterday. You should pull the uh, uh, lineup back up because I think it's at this point we started getting... Yeah, because it was the first person that we saw was Left Brain. Um, yeah, we watched Left Brain stage and that went to IDK. IDK. And IDK, unfortunately, was a little late to his set, which kind of pushed us to uh, kind of leaving his set a little earlier because we really wanted to catch Taco. Um, yeah. Taco always has an amazing DJ set at Camp Flognaw, and he always brings out a special guest. And this year he brought out Jaden Smith. Yeah, so uh, Jaden Smith came out and played I. It was a really good time uh, eye off his new album right and uh yeah no it was really cool i mean taco always puts on a good little dj set and he had played some great songs and brought some energy so oh yeah it was great it was pretty funny because like 
we're all singing Stand By Me, and he's like, you guys don't know the lyrics to that. And so then the rest of the crowd started singing it, and he's like, okay, all right, I guess we all know this song. And so then um, that's when he brought out Jaden was like almost immediately after that. And then I want to shout out Nick's on Beverly. They're a restaurant in L.A. They had a really amazing uh, lemonade that we bought and fried pickles. But oh, and I le- hate pickles. Yeah, he and hates like, pickles, and he loved like, the fried pickles. I was like, okay. I even ordered some more later that Yeah, night. he ordered, he, we got it twice because, and he doesn't even like pickles. Oh, I hate um, him. But the lemonade, it was, uh, if I can remember right, it was, what was it? It was fresh lemon juice. It was Blue Magique, Blue, yeah. which is like an algae and something else. But it was amazing lemonade. So check out Nick's on Beverly if you're in L.A., I guess. Yeah, it was cold-pressed um, lemon, agave nectar. Agave nectar. And then Blue Magique. And, Blue Magique. and that's, yeah. yeah, like you said, some kind of algae with the probiotics and that and the other. And So check out Nick's on Beverly. We, we went there twice because we thought it was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Super wholesome people there, too. They were awesome to talk to. Uh, we tried to hit up the Converse uh, mm-hmm. thing, but it was closed. We got there a little late. That was actually so... But after, I believe... Uh, let's see, after... Well, so we saw Taco, Taco set. And then that was when... Oh, you uh, don't have Brockhampton on here. That's why it's... Oh, up. yeah, So yeah. we saw... Bro- we watched all of Brockhampton set. We actually went to the beer garden again for that to get a good spot because that was really important to both of us, and especially all Oh, yeah, no. I, that was a, the, one of the biggest reasons I I think you said there. they had a perfect set. Oh, yeah, perfect there set. There wasn't like, one it was, song that you didn't want to hear. There was a couple tracks on there, but they played two B-sides that I didn't think I'd ever hear from them. Yeah, so, so I was pretty happy with that And they had a set. really amazing stage show. I mean, Brockhampton, if you get the chance, they're definitely worth checking out. Yeah, they um, didn't have the full plane this time, but they had the nose of it. They had the golden plane this time. Right. But great set, great so set. So the... The reason we didn't watch Earl Sweatshirt was because to get from Brockhampton to Earl was on the other side of the festival, and the times they played, there was no real time for it. So that's where we went to the golf store once again, uh, because Aldrich here was getting a little cold. I had got the Espalone sweater I mentioned earlier, and I was fine, but it, it was cooler this day, and Aldrich was getting a little cold, so he had to cop himself a little little fancy fancy. Yeah. No, they had the highlighter yellow Save the Bees jacket that had bees amongst the sleeves, and but, that was one of the ones I wanted to look at. And that was then, like a hoodie, like a nice Nice yeah, hoodie. it was a nice hoodie and everything, but, but I saw this fur jacket. And there was, and was no like, double X and the my, other things. Yeah. That's the thing. So they this, were out. And the hoodies, they had no double Xs. My man's got the shoulders, so he's got to wear them. You know, he's got to wear them double Xs. But they had the jackets, and yeah. man, the drip on the jackets, so... It's great. You know he caught. We know we know we had to cook it. Um, he got that. After that, I think it was time to head down to... Uh, I think that's when we headed down to DeBaby, wasn't it? I think it was DeBaby right after that. So yeah, DeBaby puts... It was at 9.05 that, for the yeah. DeBaby. DeBaby had a ton of energy. He puts on a pretty epic show. I mean, I can't say much else about it. Um, I can't wait to see what he does in the future. I really love his new album, and it was good to see DeBaby, you know, right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we didn't end up seeing YG. Neither of us are huge YG fans. I mean, if there was nothing else going on, we would have, but that was when we were trying to see DeBaby. We were um, worried about getting a good spot Yeah, we want to see a good... new album was great. Yeah, we wanted to get a great spot for him, and we're, we're much bigger fans of him right now than YG. And I know YG's got some bangers and whatnot. But, Total uh, respect towards YG. It just wasn't my type of show that I wanted to go see. Yeah, um, and then after that, uh, it was time for the mystery guest. And this is where the, it gets a little controversial. I'm sure you guys already heard about this. I might do a whole separate video on this for the channel. Um, but we we were sitting there. We didn't know what was going to happen. All day, we've been hearing different things, mostly Frank Ocean, Frank Ocean, Frank Ocean. Everybody wants Frank Ocean. We said we were going to leave early if it was Frank Ocean. I'm going to no cap. Yeah, like, well, I mean, the first year that we had been to Flognaw, the, the huge thing that it didn't make or break the trip at all but we weren't expecting almost a hundred dollar uber for event pricing um the first time right. that we were out there and so this year we we're, were like, a little cautious we can we're like skip it yeah if we could skip it let's skip it you know and it was like i appreciate frank ocean and everything and it would have been he would have put on a good show that right. would have been great to see him come back so we uh but, we walk up to find a decent spot for the mystery guest we kind of hung out in the back because again if it was frank and a, a lot everyone assumed it was frank we were just gonna leave yeah. um so tyler comes out and he says what's up everybody thank you for coming do you mind if i bring a friend out and he does so he brings out asap rocky which was pretty right. expected um i mean to an extent we asap wasn't on the bill this year and he's been on almost every other flog not bill i think so it was kind of expected to at least see asap in some capacity yeah. Um, he played two songs and then Tyler comes out and says, Hey, can I bring another friend out? And he brings out Lil Uzi Vert. Mm-hmm. Lil Uzi Vert comes out for three songs. That's, you know, a great time. I, I'm not the biggest Uzi fan. I like some of his songs, some of the songs he played. So it was a good time in that, ex- uh, respect. One well, was kind of ironic because especially with the whole UFO theory and all of that. Yeah. There was a lot there of theories. Was so. the, there was either Frank Ocean. I called Lil Uzi Vert and the you whole called guest. Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, that was my <laughs> big, like, that's who it's going to be. So it's cool to see Uzi. I was kind of right. Um, and then Tyler comes out and says, can I bring another friend out? And if you would not believe it, Tyler, the creator, brings out Drake. Right. Drake. Yeah. Um, I'm a little emotional. I'm a huge Drake fan. Aldrich shocked as hell. Because we said there's yeah. no way. There's yeah. no way it's going to be Drake. That's too Drake. big of a name. You know, like, we weren't sure <clears throat> that the audience, you know, the crowd was going to be big enough Drake. for something like Drake. That was crazy. You know, we're like, there's no way. <laughs> Like, hold up, zoom that camera in on him. There's no way that the yeah, DJ is not it just came in with started with, with the bottom, or yeah. excuse me, came, uh, yeah, started from the bottom. Yeah. Um, and Drake played a few songs, and the crowd wasn't really having it. And Drake says, "Can I play two more songs?" And the crowd goes, "Eh, you know." There was some excitement. Like, yeah, there was, was, and people were singing along to some of it. It was controversial, literally in every space of the crowd, talking to everyone that yeah. was there. And Drake, uh, Drake says, "Can I play two more songs?" And he plays two more songs. Then he says, "Hey." I've got two songs for Tyler. These are my last two songs. They're for Tyler. I love Tyler. This is the, I never play these. Here you go, Tyler. And he plays them. And we're we're just so stoked to even see yeah. Drake. We don't know if someone else is coming out. We don't know what's going on. And people start chanting, we want Frank. People start booing Drake. How, booing Drake right. off stage. So he ends up just saying, hey, I'll be out here for you. I'll be out here all night. I want to play more. Do you want me? And people said no. And he left stage. Yeah. I mean, Drake would left stage. I mean... Uh, it's just so wild. So. I was shocked. I wasn't sure if there was going to be an announcement or, like, if there... Because that's that one of the biggest things that, like, I was thinking of while I was there was, you know, once you bring out someone like Drake, it's almost rude to even Drake himself if you bring out... Like, who would you bring out after Drake? You know, that is a headliner right there. That is when that's you the bring big, out that's Drake. That's one of the biggest artists of, right our, right, of, our de- of the decade. That's probably yeah, one of the biggest... He's, Rap artists of the decade, maybe pop rap artists of the decade, um, and people reacted poorly. So, and they were so entitled because the flyer said question mark, question mark, question mark. There was no guarantee it was going to be mm-hmm. Frank Ocean or or anyone. There was no guarantee at anything, other than that you were going to get a mystery guest. So, for the 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 narrative that fans created in their head was just a, it was wild to see that happen. Yeah. Um. And we and people stood there and for maybe another fifteen minutes just to see what would happen. And oh, yeah, finally they they had to put up there. something on the screen that said thanks everyone. That's the end of it. Yeah, and, like, and Drake was gonna play more. Tyler out. put out tweets. You know he said he was embarrassed by his fans. He was mad. I mean it was not to the, he kind of thought it was funny and Drake took it in stride too. He talked about having a moment of humility being good and he made a joke about having a residency at Camp Flog not for the, yeah, next, for the next ten, 10 years. years and, yeah. and Tyler you know and, and everybody's you know laughing it off to an extent but. To see that level of entitlement from a, a whole, you know, most of an audience, and for someone like me and, and Aldrich, I'm sure I was. It was an emotional moment to get to see Drake, but people had kind of just crapped all over that because they it wasn't Frank Ocean and Frank. I mean, beyond that, Frank doesn't make appearances, this, that, and the other. But it, if it had been Kanye West, would you have booed Kanye off? It had been Dr. Dre. If that's you know an example, if it had been any other legend, would they have been booed off, or was it just because it was Drake? You know, that's yeah. And I mean, bottom line, like. With where I stand on this is I I've just never seen someone get booed off like I you know I I mean I listen to a lot of different things and you know you'll see some old mindless self indulgence videos where people are like what are you we don't know what you are you know and like when you have like an artist that wasn't expected but it's also they're at a low level and no one knew what they were coming to or something like that is like a local person that's just the crowd's not feeling but I, I get that but like I've you rarely ever see an artist like ever get booed off because that's rude like why would, like they're out they're right. there working for you. You know, they're performing for you. You and, know, and yeah. sure there's part there's of other for fans them, that's... that want to see them too. And yeah. the other thing is the the crowd, I mean, they didn't know if Drake was going to be done and someone else was going to come out and they still were acting poor. Obviously, Drake was the the headliner. He was the last one. So if Tyler and, and people have talked about it, if Tyler had come out and just, you know, said, "Hey, you guys, Frank's not coming. Let Drake finish." You know, I'm gonna let him finish. But, yeah. But if Tyler had said that, or even if, even if at another point Tyler was like, "It's Drake," you know, thank you for coming out, Drake. You know, once he'd been revealed, we're gonna rock all night with Drake. You guys, if Tyler had said that, it might have changed the crowd's perspective because they still just wanted Frank Ocean so bad, and yeah. it was just a really weird thing to like experience. But it, it didn't sour the thing though. We oh, really are so time. happy to see what we got of Drake and the entire festival as a whole was still amazing. That was just a little weird kind of ending to it. Um, I thought Drake was done after those two songs he played for Tyler anyway, so I'm not like super disappointed. I kind of set yeah. the expectation he was already done with his set, even though he would have gone on for longer. Um, and then... We got back to the hotel that night. We we got a little more food in us and just got some Subway and 
we got on the plane the next day. I don't know if there's a whole lot to wrap up about the plane the next day. It was really uneventful. We had no delays. Uh-huh. We got right home. And, yeah. Quick and easy day. If you can go, go to Camp Flogna. Oh, I want to go far. back every year. It's probably, I mean, I haven't been to a lot of the big festivals, but the level that of detail and, you know, the games and everything else that Tyler puts into the festival is just, to me, amazing. So. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a great time. Like, the crowd, the you know, the people you run into there. Everyone's, everyone's so nice. super happy. Um, Tyler posted there was no time. arrests. There was no big issues. There was no... I don't think anyone got super, super hurt that I saw or anything. I didn't Nothing, see anybody. Yeah. He, I mean, he made a disclaimer right before he even brought out ASAP Rocky that, you know, this year was quite successful and there were this is the no, no arrests. And I could have swore he did mention there was no serious injury. Yeah, it was... Like it was been it was a really kind of just really every time we've been to flog now just kind of a really great wholesome experience and um again the, to see the fans who acted that way again it was weird but again there's no i mean that that's that's whatever that leave that here or there can't flog now still amazing oh we didn't mention we also we when we were waiting for idk we happened to saw rich brian just walk by yeah, yeah we didn't yeah, get to talk right to him anything, but we saw rich him. brian it was really cool and earl actually had walked by on that because he was playing that stage and we saw earl yeah. walk by so that was kind of neat you might run into people at flog now um but yeah, uh, I don't think I'm trying to think if there's anything else from LA that was really super important. We didn't have a lot of time in LA. It was in and out for the festival. Yeah, we were kind of hoping to have some free time getting there at six o'clock on the first day, but we're showing up at midnight. We, you know, yeah, the, the, the we delays, got there before the, the delays. Festival. The first day ruined it. We we're just glad we made it in time for the festival in that rate. All right, well, I <laughs> came back in for the, the exit. This has been my brother, Aldrich, and this has kind of been our Flogna experience. I would call it a 10 out of 10, 11 yeah, yeah, yeah. out of 10 every time. Um, please, you guys, just as always, every YouTuber will say it, do the YouTube thing, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, tell me what you think about Camp Flogna. Let me know if you were there. Let me know if you want to go. Let me know what you think about the Drake incident. Let me know if you love Drake. If you hate Drake, I'll argue with you about that in the comments because I'm a big Drake fan. I'll just might get in there and argue with in my, about you. Might have to. Yeah, if, if you're talking, you know, bad on Drake and you wanted, you were there and you wanted to see Frank, well, we'll talk about that, you know, have some kind, <laughs> kind words for you in the comments. Um, otherwise, uh, check out my other videos. And if you like the vlog thing, if you like seeing kind of these experience videos, more random discussion, uh, let me know everything's been kind of targeted so far and let me know how you feel about how long this video was too if you made it to the end i'm sure not very many of you did so we'll see what happens and thank you again that'll be it